Okay, so let's continue in our series uh, entitled Be Strong. Of course, uh, this is uh, in line with our theme, overall theme for this year, which is Intentional Discipleship. And uh, our main passage for the series is found in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. So if you have your Bibles, uh, open it to 2 Timothy chapter number 2, verses 1 to 7. And for the past weeks, we have looked into the two illustrations that the Apostle Paul used here in this passage, uh, where it gives us the idea where God's grace operates or the environment where God's grace operates. Operates. And now uh, we look into the illustration of a spiritual teacher uh, two weeks ago, I think, no? uh, based on verse number two, when the Apostle Paul said to uh, Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse number two, and the things that you have heard from me from many witnesses, commit this to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. So as believers, we are to entrust the precious truths that God has entrusted to us as well. We should not just keep it for ourselves, but the reason why God entrusted you with the precious truths of the Word of God, with the precious gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, is because He wants us to be channels of blessing so that others might come to know Christ and others might come to know the, the, those precious truths uh, from, from the Word of God. So when we extend, okay, uh, when we become spiritual teachers, when we pass the baton to others, uh, we do not only experience God's grace, but we get to extend God's grace. Remember, the more and more people, the more the more the more and more we extend God's grace to other, what happens? The more thanksgiving goes to God, and therefore the more glory would belong to the Lord. So we are to be agents of God's precious truths, and we are to pass it pass it along to others. Okay, so the people, let us be spiritual teachers. Okay. So again, if you missed the preaching, no, you can always go back to our FB page and our YouTube page. It's, uh, I think it's an updated, praise God for a media ministry. Now the second illustration where God's grace operates is what we looked into last week, and that is uh, the illustration of a steering troop or a good soldier. And uh, we looked into four characteristics of a good soldier. Number one, he's engaged in battle. Number two, it's not entangled with the affairs of life. Number three, endures hardship and number four exalts his aim is to exalt his commander in chief and this is the challenge for us that as believers we are to fight the good fight of faith and we are to be good soldiers of the Lord Jesus Christ and when we strive to become good soldiers of Jesus Christ we get to experience God's grace you will not engage the battle. Those believers who are engaged in a spiritual battle, those who are enduring hardships in the Christian life, those who are not being entangled with the affairs of this life, those who earnestly desire to exalt or please the Lord Jesus Christ, these are the ones. They are the ones who will experience God's empowering grace. So if you're enduring as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, remember God's grace is available and sufficient for you. Amen? When you are engaged in a spiritual battle, remember, God's grace is sufficient for you. When you aim to please the Lord Jesus Christ in your life, I did not last week, no? the moment you wake up in the morning, our prayer should be, Lord, may I please you today in every decision that I make, in everything that I do. And at the end of the day, we have value, Lord, did I please you today? Right? If that's your aim for the day that's your desire remember God's grace is sufficient and he will empower you he himself will empower you to be able to do the things that are pleasing pleasing to the Lord someone said grace is a flow of the power of God through his people to accomplish his will among us it is about his life manifesting in and among us so in other words, if you are in that sphere where God's grace operates, His grace will flow. Amen? Sa buhay natin, hindi lang mas, hindi lang patak-patak, no? Pero ano yan? Flowing. Yung grace ng Panginoon sa buhay natin. So that we will be able to accomplish not really our desire, not really our will, but ano sabi dyan? We will accomplish what? His will. 
among us. Right? God's grace will overflow in your life. So in other words, if you're not engaged in a spiritual battle, if you're not enduring hardships as a good soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you're not, if your aim is not to please the Lord, do you think His grace will overflow in your life? No? Yes or no? Magpo-flow ba yung grace ng Panginoon kung hindi ka engaged sa battle spiritually? Magpo-flow ba yung, may experience mo ba yung grace ng Panginoon kung you're not enduring hardships but you're escaping hardships? Although, kung hindi pa rin yung grace ng Panginoon, no? Pero much more, if we are enduring, engaging, if you're a good soldier of Jesus Christ, yung grace ng Panginoon, it will flow. Amen? Amen. Right? So it's only by God's grace that e that we as believers can even can can even endure hardships uh, as we engage in the spiritual battle, and um, is it's it's all because of God's grace. That's why we can become good soldiers of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's so, a reason that. When you think about God's grace, no, even to those who are not engaged in battle, even those, even to those Christians who are not really um, enduring hardships, or nothing, even the not so good soldiers of Jesus Christ, they still experience God's grace, right? Diba? Isa yung kahit yung tayo na experience na ba yung mga tayo sa parang are not really faithful to the Lord, right? Pero andun pa rin yung grace ng Panginoon. Because if it weren't for God's grace, we would be lost. Right? But imagine how much more if you're actually a good soldier of Christ. That's why sabi dyan, yung grace talaga ng Panginoon will flow. Kung sa mga unfaithful, patak-patak lang siguro. Pero andun pa rin yung grace ng Panginoon. Pero sa good soldiers, ano, flowing yung grace ng Lord. Anong gusto mo? Patak-patak o flowing? Flowing. Ano yung mga katabi mo? Patak-patak ba o flowing? So, mas maganda yung flowing, ano? So, that's why we need to be strong. Again, our title for the series is Be Strong. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, Be Strong. Be Okay? And in order for us to be strong, we are to be good soldiers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now this afternoon, let's proceed to the third illustration no? that we can find in 2 Timothy chapter 2. And let's just read again this passage starting from verse number 1 up to verse number 7. Let us all stand in honor of the reading of God's word. And let's read responsibly 2 Timothy chapter 2 verses 1 to 7. I'll start with verse 1. Answering verse 2 and so on until we reach verse number 7. Verse 1 You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, while witness of faithful men, you will be able to You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one in grace is one word. Also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. May the Lord a blessing to the reading of His word. Let's pray, Lord. We ask and pray that you give, you give us understanding this afternoon. As we study your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, we take your seats. So the third illustration or imagery that we can find here is in verse number 5 that the Apostle Paul used in this uh, passage is the illustration or the imagery or the metaphor of a self-controlled trainer or a disciplined athlete. So I mean, verse number 5, and also if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. Now, we'll be learning some truths, no? On how we can become strong Christians in this through this illustration. Uh, but before we look into some, some details, no? Let me give you some a short background of, of this passage, particularly you 
illustration na talaga ginagamit ni Apostle Paul because if you go to other books like for example Philippians chapter 3 1 Corinthians chapter 9 which will be our cross reference this afternoon and even Hebrews chapter 12 no, which some, some Bible scholars say that uh, Paul was actually the author of the book of Hebrews if you look into these passages you can see the Apostle Paul using the same illustration that of an athlete or a runner as he talks about the Christian life. Okay? So what can we learn as far as our Christian life is concerned from the illustration or the imagery of, of an athlete? We'll look into that this afternoon. But again, um, the reason why Paul was familiar with such an illustration is not because he is an athlete, really, but he's actually familiar with what they call the Panhellenic Games during his time, okay? The Pan Panhellenic Games were actually uh, religious events celebrated through athletics. There were religious because they were these are events uh, celebrated in honor of their gods, the Greek gods during their time. So basically when you talk about the Panhellenic Games, there are four major events included in these games. Number one, the Olympian Games, which is we still have the uh, Olympics, right? And this is in honor of the god named Zeus. The Pythian Games, in honor of, of the god named Apollo, their god. The Nemean Games, which is in honor of their god Zeus and Heracles. And the Isthmian. Isthmian. Isthmian, I-S-T-H-M-I-N, Games which is in honor of the god, their god Poseidon, okay? Now, the reason why the Apostle was familiar with these games, particularly particularly the Isthmian games, because the Isthmian games now, um, it's being um, celebrated or done or held in the city of Corinth. And remember, the Apostle Paul in his missionary journey stayed in Corinth, Corinth right? So, this Isthmian Games took place in Corinth and it happened every two years. Athletes all over the Greek, you know, the Greece, Greek Empire would travel to Corinth in one of these games, part of the Panhellenic Games, and they would compete in games. And their games during that time were like foot races, wrestling, boxing, throwing discus and javelin, which you know, some it still right now the long jump chariot racing you don't have it right now but we have a horse racing and even during their time uh, it's interesting they also do poetry reading contests and singing America's got talent America's got talent but that was part of their of their games uh, before and remember if you would notice the apostle Paul was a one a tent maker and when they would hold these games during that time since many people would come there's not enough accommodation so what people would usually do according to the article that i've read is that they would pitch tents all throughout the city so that's why for the apostle paul who is a tent maker that's what that's good business but he's not really after that but what he's after for is that it's god's business because that's a very good opportunity for him, not just really to sell tents, but to preach the gospel to the people who would become here. Okay? So he, he saw these games as uh, a platform for him to be able to do God's business, not his business. Okay? And as he was probably selling tents and preaching the gospel, he saw these athletes preparing, training, even competing in in this games. By the way, uh, if you remember uh, Paul and Priscilla and Aquila, okay, they were also tent makers, and uh, they were the pioneers of the church in Corinth. No? So, dito siguro rin naging nakilala ni Apostle Paul sila. No? So that's why uh, Paul was really familiar with this illustration. That's why if you go to First Corinthians chapter nine, open your Bibles to First Corinthians chapter nine. Uh, medyo mas mahaba yung description ni Apostle Paul about an athlete in verses 24 to 27. 
And we will use this passage as a cross-reference as well. So Mark, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, that's one verse. And then also 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 to 27. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete, athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath or crown, but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air, but I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. So the key word here is actually discipline or self-control, okay? So as a soldier, good, you know, discipline, athlete or self-control, uh, athlete. And the Apostle Paul wants us to be like a self-control or disciplined athlete. And there are um, two things that I would like for us to consider, to consider this afternoon about the disciplined athlete. Probably, I think we'll just look into one. So, we will look into the crown of a self-controlled trainer or athlete and the commitment of a self-controlled trainer or disciplined athlete. But this afternoon, I would like for us to just focus on the crown of an athlete. Okay, the crown. Because if you go to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, the Apostle Paul mentioned that word, right? He competes so that he would be what? He would be crowned. Okay? That's the word that he used. And here in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, we can see, um, which is implied that the reason why an athlete competes according to the rules is because he wants to be what? He wants to be crowned. So in other words, in a, during his time, the Apostle Paul thinks about an athlete. He thinks about a crown. And as far as an athlete is concerned, that is his main goal, his main motivation, the reward or the crown that he would receive after he would compete. Exert all of his effort and compete according to the rules. Now, there are two factors that we could see here that we can find in a disciplined athlete that would greatly affect the outcome of an athlete's performance in order to get the crown. First of all, the first factor we can see here is the award factor. So in every athlete, you would see that award factor. Okay. So may award factor, no? Ano sabi sa 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 to 25? So do you not know that in a race all runners run, but only one what? receives what? The prize. So Paul says, so run that you may obtain it. What? The prize. Okay? So the reasons why athletes train hard and compete hard according to the rules is because what? They want to what? win the prize, right? That's their motivation. That's their goal. Uh, that's why they're training hard and competing hard because their view, their perspective is to receive that great prize. And as far as they were concerned during that time, it's the crown. And mamaya, titignan natin yun, no? But that's the desire of every true athlete, right? Sino dito ang player ng high school? Hindi yung player na, ano, ay, Madaming chicks, ha? <laughs> Athlete, okay? College. Ayan, okay? Sports? In, in, ano yung ginagawa nyo ng high school? Ayan, mga okay, involved, no? Volleyball. Ako, play. when I was in high school, I was a badminton player. Hanggang palarong... Palarong pambahay. <laughs> okay? College, basketball, no? So, if you're a true athlete, Okay? Your desire is really to, to win, right? A true athlete's ultimate desire is to win. That's why, you know, our men's basketball will be competing tomorrow uh, for the championship trophy. Wow. The first time in history. <laughs> now, 
Although we joined the the tournament because it's a fellowship of Baptist churches, no. But so one of our goals is of course fellowship with other churches. But beyond that, of course, since we're playing basketball and we're in the championship, ang gusto namin ay ano? Manalo sa championship, right? Amen. Amen. Boys, men, manalo tayo bukas, no? That's our desire. That's why we play hard. Eh kung laro-laro lang, hindi ko rin na lang tayo ng mark. Huwag na tayo sumali ng tournament, di ba? But we are part of that tournament because we want to win. Why? Because that's the heart of every true athlete. And the Apostle Paul understands that. An athlete runs the race in order that he may obtain the prize. An athlete competes according to the rules because he wants to be crowned. In other words, there's something at stake. Every time an athlete would perform or compete, um, and how he performs before and even during the games matters so much because he wants to be crowned. That's why in First Corinthians one, First Corinthians nine twenty five, the apostle Paul made it very clear that every athlete wants that prize. For us believers, in the same manner Paul says, for us believers, we need to have that award factor as well. As believers, we need to have that desire to receive a crown in our Christian life. And Paul says that our crown is not perishable, but it's what? Imperishable. Okay? The perishable crown that athletes compete for during Paul's time is what you call a wreath. You call it a wreath or wreath. Wreath. Okay? Wreath. Okay? So it's not really a silver or a gold crown that we, you know, that kings uh, wear, but it's actually a wreath. According to uh, Wikipedia, so the Olympic Games awarded a garland of either olives, depending on games, you know, the Pythian Games, a garland of laurel, bay leaves, and Nemean Games, a crown of wild celery, and Nemean Games, a garland of pine leaves. Though victors received no material awards of the games, they were often showered with gifts and honors on returning their uh, their bodies. Okay, so if you look into it, basically, athletes compete for this kind of crown, a perishable crown. Kung baka sa term natin dahon, dahon lang. Anyone can get an all get go to an olive tree and get some leaves and make a crown, right? Unlike. Probably in our time today, you know, when athletes compete, they really get either a gold medal, actual gold, they value it again, silver, or, or bronze, right? But during their time, they compete hard just to receive a garland of olive or laurel or celery or pine, pine leaves. If you look into it, there's no really value to that garland because they're just ordinary leaves. But the leaves... The crown, what? Was a symbol. Simply a symbol of the real reward. And what's the real reward? It's the honor, it's the undying fame that victory brings to, to an athlete. So, hindi talaga yung dahon ang pinaglalaban nila. Okay? But they actually participate in the games to win, not just to win the wreath, but that, because that wreath would symbolize that if they win the game, the honor, the prestige that they would receive as being victors or winners of such a game. Now, whether it's an actual wreath or the honor or prestige of being a winner, Paul says they are still what? Perishable. Bakit perishable? Because in leaves, they don't last forever, right? Although, you know, mga, no, no. Uh, lovers, in a sense, so that's a leaf, that's a leaf, that's a book. It's medyo tumatagal-tagal, no? Napapasa na si Sister Anilin. Right? But if you look into it, they are what? Perishable. Anong tawag dun sa ano? Nabubulok? Sa English? Biodegradable? Something like that. It's a bit, they won't last, right? And even when you think about the honor, the fame, 
that you know this crown brings to them before it's still not going to last right it's still very perishable right uh, many great great athletes before are not forgotten right although they probably have been celebrated for quite a while but they are forgotten there are still athletes before a long, long time ago who are well, well known still today but their fame, their glory, their honor will last only until this life. Huh? The kasikatan, the power, the honor, etc. Manny Pacquiao just won the fight recently. So he's back. The kanyang kasikatan sa boxing. I know he's a Christian. He knows that that fame would not last forever. Right? It's perishable. So the crowd. The actual crown, even the symbol that it, it represents, the Apostle Paul says, they are perishable. On the other hand, we believers, when we run the spiritual race just like a disciplined athlete, the Apostle Paul says that the crown or the prize or the reward or the award that you and I would receive is an incorruptible crown. You look into the Greek word, it can also be translated imperishable or indestructible. Peter says, uh, speaking about the crown of glory, it's a crown that does not fade away. So it's something that what? Will last forever. So in other words, when you and I run the race well in this lifetime, in our spiritual race, when we would face our judge, Jesus Christ, He will reward us with a crown that is eternal. It will not fade away. It's imperishable. Now, you might ask, Pastor, what kind of crown would that be? Is it like a golden crown? A parang crown mo talaga siya ng king? That, you know, or it will, will it be like a wreath, but gold? Well, actually, I don't know. Right? I don't know if there will be, you know, actual, what kind of crowns we would actually uh, receive in heaven, but the Bible says that we would receive uh, crowns, okay? But when we receive those crowns, it's not really the crown we're after for, but the symbol of that crown. And do you know what will be the symbol of that crown that we will receive in heaven? Alam nyo? Ano kaya yung symbol nun? Kung yung rift na to sa Olympic Games, it symbolizes honor, prestige, and being a winner. When we get to heaven and receive the crowns from the Lord, ano kaya yung isi-symbolize nito? That they will be symbols of God's grace. They will be symbols of God's empowering. Remember, brethren, the Bible says that all of us Believers and unbelievers alike will face the Lord and will be judged by the Lord. And for us believers, what kind of judgment will we experience? The judgment seat of Christ or the Bema judgment. And during this judgment, God will judge the things that we have done. Our good works, whether they are good or bad, or whether they are worthy to receive a reward or not, or a crown or not. Okay? That will happen when we uh, face the Lord during the judgment seat of Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.10, the Apostle Paul writes, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one, each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or bad. So what we have done here on earth for the sake of Christ will be tested by fire. And if it passes through the test of fire, the Bible says you will receive a crown and reward. If not, baliwala. Sayang. So that's the reason why we're here. That's the reason why we're serving the Lord. Okay? While we still have breath, while we still have life, while we still have energy, because we want to do things for the Lord, because His promise is that one day, our efforts, our endeavors, will be rewarded by the Lord. Amen? That's why, 
Paul also wrote in 1 Corinthians 15, 58, right? Be ye steadfast, immovable, what? Always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. That's why if you're a true believer and you have that award factor, you would take every opportunity to do your service to the Lord and you want to do it right because you know that when you do it for the Lord and when you do it right, you will receive a reward one day. Right? Sino kaya sa atin ang sa tingin nyo? So, kung baga yung bank account niya sa dami, sino na, ilang crowns na kaya ang sa tingin nyo maririsip nyo? Meron kaya? You know, sometimes, you know, because uh, we need to learn from the athlete, right? Athlete desires that award. May award factor. Minsan, yun ang kulang sa ating believers, eh, yung award factor, no? Is it wrong to be motivated by the award, the reward? I guess not, because that's part of uh, the promise that God has given to us. Although that should not be our main motivation, no? Pero that can be part of our motivation what, uh, to to the award, the crown that we would receive from God. Why? Because these crowns that we receive, I one day we offer din natin sa Panginoon. And it's a symbol of God's grace. Kaya sabi ni Paul, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10, sabi doon, But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And His grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, that though it was not I, but the grace of God which was with me. So in other words, it's because of God's grace, that's why you and I can do things for the glory of God. Amen? So one day when we receive the crown from the Lord, we would be reminded it's because of God's grace. That's why I was able to do this. So the honor, the prestige of receiving the crown would not be to us, unlike the wreaths of Olympics, but it will be to whom? It will go to God. Why? Because the reason why we were able to receive such crown is because of God's grace at work in us, empowering us to do good works for, for His glory. So Paul made it very clear that it's only by God's grace that we have been saved and we can serve the Lord. And these things will be rewarded by the Lord. Again, Paul, Paul wrote in Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 to 13, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now not only in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you. Sabi dyan, both to will and to work for His good pleasure. So even the desire that we have to serve the Lord is from God. And the ability, the power to do what we need to do is from God. Amen? That's why when we receive that crown, when our works are tested by fire and they pass through the test of fire, and Jesus would hand over to us that crown. We would be reminded, Lord, it's all because of your grace. The imperishable crowns would be symbols of God's empowering grace. And I, I you know, when, when, I, when I was trying to imagine this, you know, I think heaven would be filled with crowns. In other words, heaven would be filled with symbols of God's grace. That's why heaven will be a place, not be a place of boasting. Because anywhere you look, everywhere you look, you would be reminded of God's grace. Amen? A symbol of God's grace not only unto salvation, but also as far as our service to Him is concerned. And because it's a symbol of God's grace, when we think about the honor, the glory of the crown, it will not really be unto us, but it will belong to the Lord. That's why whatever crown we receive 
Sabi ko kanina, we will offer it back unto the Lord because He deserves the glory. Not us. If you look at Revelation chapter 4, verse 10 to 11, uh, the Apostle John gives us a glimpse of what will happen in heaven. And we can see here the 24 elders, it says here, that they would fall down in worship before the Lord Jesus Christ and sit it on the throne. Okay? And what they would do is that they would cast their what? Their crowns. So imagine natin, during the judgment seat of Christ, no? when our words are judged, Christ will reward the good works that are worthy of reward. And once the judgment is over, once we receive those crowns, what will happen? In worship of God because of His grace, what will we do? We would all bow down before the Lord and cast our crowns at His feet. And this should be the reason why we really would aspire for that reward or crown. That's why every believer must have that award factor. We must, we are to run the race, uh, the spiritual race, just like a disciplined athlete. We should strive for mastery. We should compete according to their rules. Because when we receive a reward, it's a reward that would not be, be, uh, be for us, but it's a crown, a reward that we would actually offer to the Lord. Amen? Amen. And it will be a great privilege, no? To offer as much crowns as we can. And when you think about the awards or the rewards or the crowns that you have, probably have already, you know, the things that you have done for the Lord. So, thinking nyo, pagdating ng judgment seat of Christ, may crowns kayo maliging seat. Kasi mali ninyo, no? Kung ano yung maliging seat nyo, yun din ang i-offer nyo sa Panginoon. Eh, paano kung wala? Kayo maliging seat. Pagdating sa casting of crowns na, anong mangyayari? Lord, thank you na <laughs> yeah? That's why we need to get, as in, ano, we need to be involved in the ministry, we need to be serving the Lord, we need to be doing the will of God in our life. Even though it's hard, alam ko it's hard, it's difficult, right? But we do this, we run the race well, sabi ni Paul, so that we may obtain the prize. Run that you might obtain. Do you have that award factor? It's a question like that. Then. Billy Graham, at a ceremony in Washington, D.C. on December 6, 2001, he received an honorary knighthood from Sir Christopher Mayer, the British ambassador to the U.S., on behalf of Queen Elizabeth II. When he was being awarded, the spokeswoman said he is being honored for his huge and truly international contribution to civic and religious life over 60 years. In his speech, uh, Billy Graham speaks about the great honor and he gives all the glory to God. And here's an excerpt of what he said during that time when he received the award. He said, I read a quote that appeared in the Daily News in 1903 about Queen Victoria. After hearing the dean preach a sermon about Christ's return to earth, Queen Victoria said, Oh, how I wish that the Lord might come during my lifetime. When the dean asked her why, she replied, I should like to lay my crown at his feet. The queen. Sana dumating ba? Sana dumating na si Lord na. Bakit? Bakit yung crown ko ngayon, yung prestige ko, pwede ko mag-ibigay sa kanya, ma-offer ko sa kanya. 
Diba? What a nice desire, right? And then Billy Graham said, and that's the way I feel tonight about any honors that may come to me. I'd like to lay it at his feet and plan to do it someday. And at my age, it won't be too long. So he's looking forward to what? The time that he would lay down the imperishable crown at the feet of Jesus. He said, in the same way, I want to give God all the glory and all the praise for what he has been accomplished in my life and those of my family and associates that are here tonight, I too look forward to the day when I can see Jesus face to face and lay at His feet any honor I've re ever received because He deserves it all. Listen, for us, sometimes many Christians are not really looking forward to heaven. Some of us are looking forward to heaven, just the idea of, you know, just being there, no more tears, no more worries, no more problems, that's it. But heaven is beyond that. One of the great things that will happen in heaven is this. And for us believers, the question is, are we looking to, toward this? Are we looking forward to this? When we would lay down our crowns. Meron ba? May may alay kaya tayo sa Panginoon. So may this be one of our motivations to finish the race well because one day we would have the great privilege to offer to Jesus to crown Him. Sabi na Him, no? Crown Him with many crowns. Baka... Ano kaya? Crown him with some crowns? Crown him with a few crowns? Or crown him with a crown? Or let them crown him? Huwag sana, no? Sana lahat tayo na we will be able to offer crowns before the Lord. Amen? Amen. So that's the award factor. So, kung tayo nag- Nagahanda para sa future natin, nag no? We're thinking about that prize that one day we would enjoy. Sa Christian life din natin, sa atin possible. That should be the same thing. Just like an athlete who looks forward to that prize. Let us run the race in order to obtain the prize. And that's the last one that we'll close with this. The attitude factor of an athlete. So there's the, ano yung una? Award factor. But there's the attitude factor. Sabi ni Paul sa 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 24, Do you not know that in a race all runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you might obtain it. Now during the time of the Apostle Paul, wala daw ano, first, second, third sa competition. Unlike now na may gold, silver, and bronze. No? But during Paul's time, when they would compete, like for example in athletics, all of them would run, but only one will be declared as one winner. So that's why if you're part of the race, what will you do? You would run for your best, not to strive for the second place, second best, or third best, but your goal is actually to win because isa lang na declared. Wala nang iba. Right? So in other words, if you fail to win, better luck next time. Isa lang. Okay? Now, what Paul is saying here is that, ano ba? Sa Christian life pa, isa lang hindi pa kanilinward at hindi. Paul is simply referring, the point of Paul here is this, run in order to win. In the same manner that the attitude of an athlete would give his best so that he can win, dapat ganun din tayo sa Christian life natin. We should give our best to the Lord as we run this race of faith in this lifetime so that when we get to heaven, we would receive the rewards. In other words, we must have that attitude of a winner. Amen? Winner ka. We should have that attitude. We, we must be giving our best, giving our all, 
not quitting, not lazy in order to receive or win the reward from the Lord. And I think this is one of the things that is lacking in many of our churches today or in many Christians today. The attitude of winning. Okay? Anong ibig sabihin ko dito? Well, many of us are not really aiming or striving to win the prize of the spiritual race. Actually, how many of you are really thinking of finishing your race well? Probably for some of us, we're not even thinking about running the race. We're even thinking about quitting the race. Diba? Parang ayaw ka nang mag-serve. Ayaw ka nang ayaw sa ministry. Parang, Lord, pagod na ako. Parang, kain na lang muna ako. Kaya kanina, while Brother Joy was praying, I was thinking, I was reflecting on the message. I thought to myself, if all of us here would have that winning attitude, meaning I want to run the race well and I want to finish my race well, now it can be the entire race or it can be, you know, but how many of us here are actually thinking of finishing well our race here in Dubai? The spiritual grace. Meron ba? Yung di po ba iniisip nyo, pag umalis, pag inalis tayo ng Panginoon dito sa Dubai, and we think about the service, the ministry that we have done for the Lord, we can say with confidence, just like the Apostle Paul, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. This, this is a spiritual race that we are in. But how many of us are really thinking about finishing it, running it well, and finishing it well? Kaya yung maganda itin natin sa divine ng passing on the baton. That's one way of finishing it well. But many, the problem is that many Christians don't have that winning attitude. Many Christians are simply have, you say, ibang survival attitude lang eh. Basta makalawas mo. Mas worse yun ang quitting attitude. Sana wala yun. Pagkit yung brother John, yan sabi yan. Sana hindi tayo mag-quit. Amen? Amen. So yun sa akin, don't quit. Don't quit. Are you planning to quit? No. Well. <laughs> yeah. Are you planning to quit as far as your service is concerned, your ministry is concerned, your, uh, the, the things that the Lord has entrusted to you is concerned, your faith in God, your relationship with God? Are you planning to quit or are you planning to press on? Are you planning to finish well? Say mo sa atin mo, finish well. Well, say mo well. Well, finish well ha. So don't give up. Let us run the race. Let the award or the prize or the crown that we will offer to the Lord one day motivate us to have that attitude of finishing our race well. Amen? Don't quit. Run well. Press on. Finish the race. I'll close with this. John Bloom, in an article entitled Don't Give Up, he said, Basahin nga natin sa pagsabay na. Ready? Go! Don't give up when that familiar sin still crouching at your door after all this year bounces again with temptation. Don't give up. Struggling with sin? Don't give up. Next! Don't give up when you feel that deep soul weariness from long battles with persistent weakness. Feeling weak, hard pressed, losing the battles, weary, don't give up. Next, don't give up when your long asked and sought and not for prayers have not yet been answered. 
Ano pinagpe-pray mo? Sinagot na ba ni Lord? Hindi pa rin? Thank you ba? Tuloy lang. Yeah, thank you na prayer meeting palagi. Para... Pero pag sinagot ni Lord, tuloy pa rin sa pray. Amen? Pag sinagot na, wala na. No? Next. Don't give up when the devil's fire darts of doubt, find flesh, and make you real. Sunod-sunod ba yung atake ng kaaway? Don't give up. Next. Don't give up when the fragmenting effect of multiple pressures seems relevant. Pressure ka ba? Sa work, sunod-sunod na sa family, sa love life, kung saan man, finances, kaya tala, no? Don't give up. Next. Don't give up when the field the Lord has assigned you to is hard and the harvest does not look promising. Discourage ka ba sa pagdi-disciple? Para bang walang fruits yung labors natin? Ang sabi dyan, don't give up. Next, don't give up when you labor in obscurity when you wonder how much it even matters. Parang trabaho ka na Lord, may resort ba? May nangyayari ba? Don't give up. Next, don't give up when your reputation is damaged Are you being persecuted? Condemned because of your faith? Don't give up. Last, don't give up when waiting on God seems endless. Don't give up when you have failed in sin. Don't wallow. Repent again. Get your eyes off yourself again. And fix your eyes on Jesus again. Get up and get back in your life. Amen? Amen. Don't give up. Get up and be back in the fire. Last, I'm going to say that. Let's read this. Ready? Go. Do you want to experience God's grace in your life? Yeah. Have that award factor. Pensa, attitude factor. The winning attitude. Run the race well. Paul says in Uh, Philippians chapter 4, verses 13 to 14. Brethren, I do not count myself, or I think that's chapter 3, to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let's pray, Lord. Salamat po sa paalala mga sinisalita. And I pray, Lord, that you would bless this church in our hearts. If there's anyone here this afternoon who feels like quitting, Lord, I pray that you would use your words to encourage, to challenge us to not quit, but to continue to get up, get back, and run the race well. Because a great reward is waiting for those who will be faithfully running this race well until the end. This reward is the crowd that we will be offering to you as well. Thank you for the comfort, the assurance that we labor not in vain. And all of the things that we do in this life to serve you, to glorify you, to obey you, and to follow you are not really forgotten by you. They are not wasted. They will be rewarded. So Lord, may these truths comfort your children today so that we would be steadfast, immovable, and we would abound in the work of the Lord. That we would be strong.